Calvin Castine at Overs Corners, otherwise known as Sayota, on Route 22 in the town of Shazy. A popular spot in this uh, area, D&D &D Meets, where some major construction is going on, and we're going to see if we can find a member of the Dutail family to fill us in on exactly what's happening here uh, on this October 25th. 2016 in beautiful downtown Sioda. Okay, we're right in the middle of the action here. I've got uh, Sharon Dutil, the, the first D in the D&D, &D, right? That's right. All right, and the, the second D is not here. We get the third D. The most important D. The most important D. The baby D. The baby D. <laughs> Jane Dutil. And uh, I saw a post on Facebook that you were all excited about this. What, what exactly is going on here? Well, after, after two years, we're putting up a new meat uh, processing facility because over the years we've grown so much that we uh, exceed our demand. We can't keep up with the products. So this new facility is going to be a custom exempt, a USDA product uh, line facility. And we'll also do a wild game because we still have a wild game variants in our state product. So we'll have a multiple licenses under this building um, and it'll allow us to do pretty much everything. Uh, so we'll have all pieces of those by. And we can do anything possible for the customers from pigs to beef to venison to uh, put stamps so they can resell their meat after it's stamped uh, at the slaughterhouse. Okay, so they still got to go to a slaughterhouse to... They still have to go uh, to a slaughterhouse to get the to get their carcass uh, stamped and uh, slaughtered there by USDA, and we we do have access to one that's close by uh, that'll stamp it. And then we can take the whole the side back and then work on it from there. How close by is that? It's in uh, Grand Isle, Vermont, and they're fairly new too, so they're getting into it. But uh, they're willing to stamp them for us for us to bring them back. Okay, I know right now you're in the, the start of a probably your busiest season with, the, with all the hunters. Uh, it's a, probably a hectic time for you to be doing this right now. It's a, it's the worst time and it's the worst season we've ever seen. We've never had so many deer come in this early. Um, as you can see, I got band-aids all on my fingers. So it's been rough. We might actually get a, a safety glove for the first time. Um, but we've uh, we're definitely uh, seen a lot more deer and, and pigs than we've ever had to do before. I'm just trying to balance it because I know that I want that business for the new facility, so you don't we're, we're struggling. Away, right? No, so we're struggling, but we don't want to turn anyone away. But everybody's being patient. Our turnaround times, uh, you know, they got to be patient with it just because we don't merge meat and stuff. So you don't merge meat, that means you, you do a pig, you're doing a pig. You do a pig, it's all yours back. We do a wild game, it's all yours back. There are minimums for the products like our jerky and snack sticks, and hot dogs, kielbasa, because we don't merge. But uh, so far, people like that, and it, it's worked for us so, this far. Okay, Sharon, look like you had something to say. Well, I was going to say that if you don't need to pay USDA to sell to someone else, the boys will take care of it. They can kill it. You don't have to take it to a slot of consulting. It's for your own personal consumption. Yeah, if, you, if you sell it live weight to a customer, it can be custom exempt. Okay. But only if they, they're going to sell it. They're going to sell it by the whole half down to the 16th. Legally, you don't have to. I can go custom exempt. There's all kinds of laws in the meat business. People don't realize that it's not as easy as everybody thinks. Uh, we got folders and folders of the regulations and paperwork, and there'll be a lot more when this building goes up. So how big a facility will it be? It's so about 50 by 60, roughly, two stories, uh, a big cooler, a big freezer, uh, a, a bigger a smokehouse double our capacity that we think we're buying out in Montreal. So it's a local smokehouse. And then a big cutting room where it just gives us more space. Right now we're struggling. We don't have space at all. Um, for the amount of meat we produce in our small, small uh, area, it's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, it's skinning room. And it's going to have a skinning room as well. A skinning room? So we don't have to do it outside right now. Okay. All right. Who's uh, doing your construction right here? Uh, the guy right now doing the excavation is Aaron from A to Z. Uh, he actually, there's two things that got him the job is that we didn't call him, I didn't really know about him, but he made the initiative to stop in. Heard we were doing something, wanted to give us an estimate, and uh, that showed me a little bit of drive. And then uh, I talked to a bunch of different people, there's a lot of work at Sluders, and 
Everybody had everything but great things to say about him. And if we hit ledge, he had access to a, a hammer, which we thought we were going to hit ledge. Luckily, it looks like we're in the clear, but he had access to a hammer, which a lot of guys didn't have a hammer. I see some big uh, ledge-like stones back there. And he's been pretty good for the time frame. They said he was going to be here. He's here. And uh, he should have it pretty much all done. The concrete's getting poured by Leduc's, uh, the customers of ours. So they should be able to start. And then Adirondack the Affordable Plumbing is going to be doing the plumbing. Uh, they're local as well. So we try to keep it as much local, but we did struggle trying to find someone in our time frame because we could never lock in and get the, the give them a definite time when we could start because we were waiting to get signed off. And uh, the framing is going to be some by some local people as well. So you're keeping it all local as much as you can? As much as we can. Uh, the smokehouse, you know, like you say, is going to be local. Some of the meat equipment has got to come from the west because no one around here manufactures it. But we are uh, planning on using a local uh, salesman from uh, Valcor Process Technologies. Norm, I think that's where we're going to be purchasing a lot of our stuff. Um, he's never really sold any of this equipment. He deals with a lot of cheese equipment. So I think it's a good route to, to go through him, being a guy just in Plattsburgh. Okay. Now, this must be a big decision to do something like this, Sharon. It's, it's, that isn't cheap. It's a big decision for the boys more than it is for me because I'm really not hands-on with that at all in the back. That's their baby. But it's so money. At this age, <laughs> yes, it's a big decision. But this will give Shane his boost to get into the future. I mean, the store is going to be his anyhow. The other kids don't live around here, and they're not interested in it. So this way, this ensures his future, too, into something that he's been helping us with the last six years. The decision was uh, a big decision. It's a, uh, it's a lot of money. Uh, but when it's said done, it could be another, it could be a third of a million dollars. So you have to have your numbers. When we actually did the business plan, and I was very conservative that what I thought I could produce out of this building to make the, to make the payments. I didn't want to fudge numbers. If I couldn't make it go with those numbers, that wasn't a good decision. But everybody in this area knows that they're starting to grow their own pigs, chickens. So we're trying to change. It's going back to the old times that started that where back people used to raise their food. Now they're doing it again. They want to know but, what they're eating. And they want something that can produce it and they want to see how it's produced and stuff. Yeah, but you know, it's done locally. Some people, you know, think the products are expensive, but they don't realize that for instance that link machine we have in the store is a hundred thousand dollars new. All the vacuum machines and stuff is uh ten, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, you're talking a third of a million dollars in equipment that's already around and it's not just cutting it's the processing part you're going into the smokehouse you're linking the sausage you're adding ingredients it's not like just cutting a pig to cut it it's smoking it getting your hams getting your bacon and know what you're getting right now we're having our neighbor is raising eight green fed pigs for us that are sold so you know everybody is the younger people I find I work at the farmers market all summer and I find the younger people want to know where their food is coming from what's in their food that's why they're all starting their own gardens and stuff it's it's kind of going back to like when we were young many many years ago <laughs> and, we, and we also we do uh, use some local vegetables in our products and when we use maple syrup it's all from uh, our own trees that we tap from tap and sap and sugar works um, the park is boiling for them so we got a good relation with them so uh, we, we'll never run out of syrup <laughs> even if we don't have any of our own yeah. but uh it's just teaming up with the farmers but we'll definitely still we deal with western beef and stuff like that but when you want local organic we get our hands on just about everything eventually it might be a 5a processing depending what the state allows because uh, a lot more people want to do their own chickens and uh, turkeys that's a different license but when we start off we're going to get the the easiest quickest license to get us some income coming in and then we're going to work on the harder stuff over the year i mean we're not going to have usda products from every product we're going to hit the most easiest popular. products, the, the most popular to sell to other uh, places like, you know, local colleges and local other stores. Whatever and gets that fastest dollar to start working and build up. We're going to be hiring some more employees. Uh, we just hired some more seasonal employees right now because the demand's so high for uh, all of us to cut. But okay. it probably will be kind of like Glacier packing is. It, it will only be in a certain radius. We don't plan on putting our product into chains and going a thousand mile radius or anything like that. Are you going to have a hot dog? You just mentioned uh, Glazier. We, 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 have, a hot, we have a hot dog, but 
I don't like making hot dogs. And Glaciers, uh, that can be their baby. Uh, Sean, those guys can have it. I'm not. Uh, I'm still working our hot dogs. They're good, but I'm fussy. I'm, there's a lot of other products out there. There's a lot, of, there. there's a lot of other products out there that I want to get out there that no one else really does. That's uh, that all be under the uh, Jesum Crow label. It'll be yeah. Uh, it'll be a uh, Jesum Crow label, and then we'll have a Jesum Crow Smokehouse, all under D and D Meats. They're all interlinked. Um, but it will be under that label because we want to keep the logo pretty solid on the packaging. It's catchy. But it, it will be under that label. Well, this is a daring adventure. You know, your, your parents are getting very, very old. So well, I know. will say that I did put my notice in. I told them in 10 years, I'm done. 10 years. Adrian, as soon as you hit 50, you're done. Yeah, as soon as I hit 50. Adrian never plans on retiring. He says, you retire and you die. So I'm hoping in 10 years, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we said that too, right? Calvin remembers way back when. With, with the 35 vision, years with the vision I'm hoping to retire younger than they do. Okay, well, good luck That's, to you. that's my vision. Good luck to you, right? <laughs> And it's just building this building is going to be a lot less stress on the employees, easier in their bodies, the lifting, ergonomically friendly lifting. Uh, I'm going to get my space. office back. Shane's not going to be in there anymore. He's going to have his own office in the back. Win win here. Well, a lot of people have voiced their opinion why do you stay this? But they don't realize what we're working in this size. I probably would have went a little smaller than my father, but it was an ongoing argument that he wants it one way. And so it was, it was a big debate back and forth. Well, you have it's, to dig into his shoeboxes to come up with that third of a million, so... Yeah. His, uh, I wish father, we had it in the shoebox. Yeah, I wish we did, too. I think the shoebox burned up in the fire. His uh, his dad said, if you're going to build it, build it the right size first time around. Even with the store, when we rebuilt off to the fire, we thought it was going to be big enough because we'd added on more dimension, and it still isn't big enough. So, this way, you won't be saying in three years, wow, we should have went this way. You're just kind of doing things over and over again. You can always use more space. If, and at the rate they're going, they're going to need it. If the, if the store never burnt down, the decision would be really easy at that point because we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had a remaining uh, payment for the rebuild and uh, it would have been uh, extra income. You know, the store is paid off when it burnt down. So it would have been a real quick, easy decision at that point to just go ahead and do it. Uh, still bothers there, mention the fire, yeah. as, you, as you can see. But it would have been an easy decision for us for sure. That fire? No, no, like six years ago, maybe five. Five, six years ago. But it was a total loss, and uh, you know, it was, a, it was a huge claim. People don't realize it, and they they think you got all this money and everything else, but they don't realize that you got to take another three hundred thousand out to finish a building that was yours that was paid off. They they, they don't grasp it. I mean, right. workers' comp insurance alone this year is by in the twenties. It's crazy. Now, when's this going to be ready for occupation? Well, we figure it's going to be like a five-month a five month process. We might have someone that can start framing it up right off and then pluck away because we are going to do some of the work ourselves. But we're hoping to shell it up and get a freezer in there and a cooler to help take away a little stress. And if we have to move some cutting tables in there unheated and work in skidoo suits, I guess we're going to have to do it. If they have the freezer room and they have the cooler room, they can put temporary roofs on if they have to, but we really don't have the space in the stores. So we really need to get that up. And then also, if we do, we might be able to get the smoker in there. And I'm going to go up to Montreal and uh, they'll teach you how to run it because there's going to be a learning curve. You know, it's it's uh, three times the machine that we have now, so it'll be a wicked learning curve to learn how to use smokehouse. So. And you're going to do this during your busiest season? Well, that will probably be later we're gonna, on. We're going to see how it goes and unfolds, I guess. Maybe in the January we'll start plucking away, but. You know, the new smokehouse, you don't want to use it on people's meats until you, you don't screw, want to screw up a few batches yeah. of your own meats first. Right. Our meats are easier to replace than theirs. Okay, anything else, folks? Uh, nope. no we appreciate yet? you coming out. All right, D&D &D Meats and uh, Sayota. And uh, an ongoing project. It's in back of the uh, store. That road we see up there is the road that heads out toward Altona. <laughs> and this has been it. I'm catching cold already. Thank you, guys. Sure, go ahead and kill that pig. Like Thank you. Shoes. Okay, there ain't enough with uh, three details working here. Now we got two more. We got Joseph Dennis over here, Joseph Adrian's brother. All right, what's he doing there, Sharon? He's packaging. Packaging, okay. And what's uh, packages. <laughs> what's Mark doing over here? Mark's making pepperoni and cheese sticks. Pepperoni and cheese sticks. 
So there's no link in those. They just cut them and package them. Usually, like if it's for the store, there's like five, six in a package. It's a good snack, so it's easy road trip snack. A road trip snack. There's a deer on the table. I'm waiting for somebody to take the knife to it. All right, I won't. We had a well, big the, bear come in yesterday. A bear came in yesterday. His name was Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> and we got a 700 pound pig coming in today. <laughs> Watch out, Shane. Filming. Alright. So this is uh, your packed quarters right now, so all this is going to be expanded. Wait till next year, Dennis. You're going to have all kinds of elbow room. They say. So they say. Well, we can get down to the smokehouse area in a minute. All right, if you want me to, I'll go. Is there anything in the smokehouse? Anything smoking? Mark's not paying attention to us. He's, when Mark is on he's, his he's machine, in the zone. He's when in Mark the zone. is on the machine, don't talk to him. He's in the zone. He's, he's making his sausage, and that's what he's thinking about. Is there anything in the smokehouse, Mark? Yes. No, the door's open. The door's open. Okay, is this stuff being smoked or what? It looks like it's ready to be put into the water bath. It's been smoked, ready to be taken out. Uh, I'm not uh, sure exactly what kind of sticks it is. I'm not sure. What do you use for the casing outside? What, what do you, um, you know? Yeah, no, that's the boys' <laughs> department. Some kind of intestine. <laughs> okay. This is... That's this all I is, need to know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> different ones, different gradings and stuff. This is venison ready to be put in to jerky. So if people the, bring in their deer, you can uh, do this for them. Right, they can process. You know, um, to say that we cut just to cut a deer, no, they have to have some of it processed, especially when they're this busy. In the lesser season, if they're not that busy, they would maybe take one in just to cut. But normally, you have to have a portion of it processed. Okay, that's so you can make a Now, we don't out of it. currently do beef, but in the new facility we will. It's because we don't have um, the ceiling height to hang a beef. Okay. So, uh, once we get the new facility up, we will be doing that too. Okay, but they'll still have to go elsewhere to get it slaughtered and then bring it here? They, if they're using it for their own family's consumption, they don't have to go elsewhere. Okay. They will kill it. Okay. The guys will kill it. That's the pig, the pig that they're doing today is, is getting shot by them. So, but it's for their own consumption. Right. If you're going to be selling it to anybody, then it's, yes, it it's has being to be euthanized. It's yes. It's being euthanized. That's a nice term. Okay. <laughs> so, but if you're going to be selling any of it, then it has to go to a USDA facility to be okay, euthanized. Okay. Private consumption. Yeah, just like right. we used to uh, butcher our own uh, cattle at home, and you know, right. and bring it to a butcher to cut up. Okay, so this is uh, what you can do now, and it's going to be even more coming this spring. Anything else, Sharon? Um, I don't know. We can go take a look in the cooler and see how many okay. thousands of totes there are. <laughs> All right, let's go look in the cooler. <laughs> let's see what there is in there. Where are we here, Sharon? Well, now we're in our walk-in cooler, and you see why we have to expand our facility. These totes are all different meat products from people's venison, from their uh, pigs and waiting to be made into product. This is summer sausage that's cooling, that's been taken out. Um, the little buckets are, we pre-measure our seasonings for whatever they're going to have done with their product. So as you can tell, and this is really not bad today. Usually there's about easily twice as much in here. So can, it's, it's pretty crowded. You can almost walk through here, but not quite. Uh, not quite. Not if you're got a little girth to you. And right over my shoulder, I won't show it, I've got a, a hoof of a, of a, a slaughtered a leg, animal. A leg from a, I won't a show venison. That. For the sake of the viewers, I won't show it. Okay, for the sake of the viewers, it's probably for the best. Okay, this is the actual freezer. This is the walk-in freezer. And as you can see, it's stacked up pretty good. This is a good day. You can kind of get in there. But normally you have to be very thin and only a couple of kids that work for me are very thin so the rest of us send them in and say climb the, climb the totes and go get the donuts or whatever needs to be brought out. So Adrian never goes in there then? Uh, he actually goes in and keeps it organized best. Alright, that's the freezer. Well we've done a couple of... 
There we go. I'll plug the microphone in. We've done a couple of stories here. Hope that mug was plugged in when we're in the cooler and so on. If not, you got pictures and no sound. What's that? We got more coming? What? All right, big buck contest. What's that all about? Well, this is the first year that we've done this, and we're doing it in association with Shazy Rod and Gun Club. You had to be signed up already by October 15th. And if you have the biggest buck, you have a chance of winning um, cash prizes along with processing from us. There's, a, I believe, a first, second, and third prize. And then I also believe there's a prize, and I'm not sure what that is, for getting skunked, meaning you either didn't get a deer or you got the smallest deer, something along that line. This was Shane's contest, so I just sold chances on it. So October 15th when you have to sign up, what's you the different have columns? Sign. What's the different like, It's just different names. Just it got harder to write at the bottom. For the first year, we had pretty good response. I think they had uh, over 40 guys sign up. So if so they, get a, they get a buck, they got to bring it in here to get processed? They have to bring it in here to get weighed. Okay. And usually they'll leave it to either get cut up or put into some kind of uh, processed meats like sausage or you know sticks or jerky what Shane didn't say is and we do have a lot of hunters that will do this throughout the summer if you've had uh, venison that you have in your freezer and you have 30 40 pounds that you really aren't using like roast something like that you can bring that in frozen to us and we can take and turn that into a product for you we were at a big food wine and craft show this weekend at Chiel at Potsdam and there was a farmer that approached us that had a beef that he didn't put into white steak so they're going to come from pot Sam and they're going to bring it and they're going to make it into sticks and different types of products that the kids will eat. Yeah. Who likes steaks? You know, Nobody, <laughs> <Yeah>. especially kids. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so will that wrap it up, Sam? I think so. I think we're pretty much wrapped up. We never got to talk to the, the old bee. Well. What happens when you leave me here? That's right. We leave you in charge. Things happen. Leave me in charge. Wow. So, thanks for coming by, Calvin. All right. B&B Meats. You beautiful down.